What's happening, family? Dr. Joe here. Hope each of you are well and blessed. Get tons of questions, but this is another great question that I want to present on the Transformation Lab. Why am I always hungry? A lot of people want to know that. A lot of people ask that question. Why am I always hungry? Have you ever asked that asked that question to yourself? You ever heard someone say that? Have you ever heard someone give that that is the reason that they can't adhere to any type of diet? There are a few reasons that I want to share with you that you are always hungry. Number one, it's because you've never truly been hungry, meaning that what you think is hunger is not. It's psychological. Let me tell you something. Virtually no one in the West, in America, has ever truly experienced what hunger is. All right. Even people who are at the lowest levels of poverty in this country. All right are individuals who have not experienced true authentic hunger. This is not to point the finger at any type of socioeconomic group or to say that something is wrong with this crop of individuals or to deny that they're individuals who have been hungry or uh, in need of food. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is 99.9% .9 of people who think they're hungry are not. What we've done is we have allowed food to be our major default mechanism of what we as a culture do whenever we are experiencing any vast array of emotions. We eat when we're happy. We eat when we're sad. We eat when we get married. We eat when people die. We eat when we close the deal. We eat when we're fired. When we're sitting at our desk doing nothing, we eat. You eat while you're doing activities. There are some people who have programmed themselves to you cannot do this thing without eating. You're in your bed and you're watching TV and you have to eat. You go to the movie theater and you have to get popcorn and pay 20 bucks for a hot dog. You have to eat. You're riding in your car and you have to eat. You're on a plane. You're sitting. You're waiting. All of these things are psychological uh, neural pathways that we have trained ourselves to do in certain states. So people have to become aware of that and to realize, hey, you know, I'm really not really hungry right now, but I'm making a conscious decision to eat. And what happens is when you are more aware of these types of things, as well as when you are equipped to a couple other things that we'll get into, it helps you realize, hey, I I'm really not hungry. I just thought I was. OK. All right. The second reason why people are always hungry is because we're living in a country whereby we have an obesity epidemic. All right. All right. Especially amongst African-Americans, African-American women being the most dem the most obese of all demographics and black men right under them. It's very, very close. And this this is a, a, a epidemic in our community. And we all know we all understand that. And what happens is when a person becomes obese there are many hormonal imbalances. And one of the major hormonal imbalances when a person becomes obese is there are certain uh, hormones that are released when you have a healthy body weight. So body fat to lean muscle ratio. There are certain hormones that are released that makes the body feel satiated once you are eating. Meaning that that feeling of I'm, I'm, I'm full, I'm satisfied, I don't want any more. The more obese we become, the less those proper mechanisms work. So what happens is we are always overeating. We're always overindulging. We're always over drinking. And we don't have that switch within our heads, within our minds that causes us to cut, to, um, to, to stop and to not want to eat more. And, and, and what you'll find is through the years of not only participating or being obese, we train our stomachs to consume um, an exorbitant amount of food that is astronomically above what we should. When you look at little kids, when they eat, a lot of little kids, when they become full, they'll throw up because their stomachs cannot hold a lot of calories. But what happens is the older we get, and the longer we are participating in these self-harming types of, of, of habits where we're overeating, overindulging, we're stretching our stomachs. So when you look at, at a stretched stomach, it leads to an extended waistline. On top of that, 
a culture that has major issues with obesity. All right. So that's another reason why you can't control yourself when you get on the, when you're when you're on the path of losing pounds and transforming your life. What you'll notice when you're adapting all of the systematic things that are needed to become healthier, you'll get to the point to where you will learn how that the leaner you become, the more satiated you become. And and it's because the body is 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 coming back into balance, hormonally speaking. The last reason why we're always hungry is because of the types of foods that we're eating. You go to the grocery store and you're looking on the aisles, 99.9% .9 of the food that is on the aisles is crap and garbage. The only foods that are in a supermarket that are fit for human consumption are the foods that are on the edges, are the foods that require refrigeration, not freezing, but refrigeration. The only foods that are fit for human consumption are foods that die quickly. If you're consuming any type of food that is not going to die, it means that it never lived. If you're consuming foods whereby you can go to the grocery store one time a month or two times a month and buy said foods and they're lasting you months at a time, you're eating garbage. We need to be making frequent, frequent trips to the grocery store because the things that we are buying are dying precipitously. That's how you know it lived. If something can't die, if something is not dying, it never lived. All right. That's the bottom line. We're eating tons of sugar. We're eating tons of cereals. We're eating tons of cookies. We're eating tons of processed foods. Where you're eating those types of foods, you never become full off of them. All right. It, it, they're weaponized. All of the foods in the, in the center of the aisles of any grocery store are weaponized foods. It's a reason why when people are on food stamps and they get various vouchers for foods, for food stamps, they don't get vouchers that allow them to buy foods that are good for them, that are that are that are that are whole, that are healthy, that come from the earth. Most of the people who get those types of subsidies are buying more weaponized foods. The weaponization of foods is a major issue in our communities. So not so we as black folks, not only are we consuming these weaponized foods, but we're eating uh, antithetical to our, our ancestors who were hunters and gatherers who had plant based diets. And when they ate meat, it was very sparingly. They never ate anything processed. All right. They were lean. They never had issues with obesity. But on top of that, we're living in communities that have food deserts. All right. Then when's the last time you had a politician who brought this up? In your county, in your city, we don't talk about that. We want to talk about everything else. We want to talk about Black Lives Matter. We want to talk about White Lives Matter. We want to talk about this. We want to talk about that. All of these political things. But when is the last political representative in our community brought up the fact that we as people of color live in communities where we do not have access to fresh fruits and vegetables? Tell me one Whole Foods that's in a black community. Tell me one. Tell me one fresh market that's in an underserved community. All right, we all know that this is a game, but like, you know what? At the end of the day, we can't wait for politicians to, to fix us. We have to fix ourselves. This is why our children and our communities need to be around local gardens. We need to have an understanding of hydroponics. We need to be growing our own crops. We need to be learning how to plant seedlings. We need to learn how to live off of the land. We have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the only way for we as black people out of this issue and in this problem is not at a booth, but it's in our homes and it's in our communities. So let's allow this the, this subject matter of, 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 of health and wellness to be on the forefront of our of our minds in our communities and in our homes. I hope you enjoyed this particular message. If you got any questions or comments, post them down below. Till the next time, peace.